Last time we've set up our playable Das character and look at that, we've made some fixes in Blender. Look at the legs, they look great. There's no more pork through. So yeah, a little bit of patience and sculpting magic in Blender makes that happen. Let's see how we can give Mira some hair now. So she bald isn't really a good look for her. So let's take a look. We're gonna go and bring it in as a separate item and then attach it with the socket in Unreal Engine. So I've used hair that's not actually made for the character that I'm using. I'm using the Genesis 9 character called Mira and hair that's called the bubblegum hairstyle that is made for Genesis 8. So here I have it and make sure the hair is not parented to your character. So it's a standalone item in your scene. I've moved it in place just so that I can see does it work with my character, but I'm sure it's not going to come in like this in Unreal Engine and we're going to have to make some manual adjustments. For now, select the hair, head over to File, Send to DAS to Unreal. And it is also a skeletal mesh and I'm going to call this one Bubblegum Hair. There we go. That should take not so long to import into Unreal Engine. There we have it. Familiar dialog boxes come up. This is all good. As a result, we now have a new folder here. We now we have Mira and now we have the Bubblegum Hair. So separate item that we now, it's our job to kind of attach that. And one way to do this is in our third person blueprint for the playable character. So much like we've attached a DAS mesh to our Quinn mannequin, I'm going to go and attach another one here. That's also a skeletal mesh because that is what our hair was. I'm going to call this one hair mesh. And this will now be the bubblegum hair. Here it is. And if we pop it in, we can see that's not really in the correct position here at all. And that's fine. We need to go and fix that with a bit of blueprint code. First of all, though, we need to tell our skeleton where it can attach it. And we can do this with a socket. If you open up the content browser and go back to mirror, you'll find that mirror has a skeleton. So double click that and open the skeleton. And then over here, there is the skeleton tree on the left hand side. Open that. And this now shows you the whole hierarchy here. We're going to attach a socket to the head. So let's find that. Close left shoulder and there's the neck and there's the head. So this is where I want to do that. Right click on the head and choose add socket. And we're going to go and rename that, double click into that or hit F2 to do that and call it hair socket. You could also use this for things like sunglasses. And because we can't really, so this is the position of the socket, but there's nothing in it. So in order for us to preview, is the socket actually in the right position or does it need to be moved? We can go and right click here and say, add a preview asset. And since we want to attach hair there, let's go and put the, let's search for it, bubblegum hair. There we go. And we can see, hey, it's kind of not here because it's a little bit too far up in the air. So this is not where I want that to be. But if we don't move the socket, this is literally what it'll look like. This probably happens because the socket is at head height. And by default, the hair had its pivot point at the very bottom of the figure. So this is probably exactly that offset that we see. But no worries, we can go and change that. So not with the preview asset selected, but with the actual socket selected, make sure you go and use your manipulator as good as you can and move this down to where it really needs to be. So I find that you can either use the numeric values here on the details panel, but they can be a little bit fast. So that's not, not, not super fine control here. That means you can now type in numbers or you can use a navigational trick that Unreal Engine has. So here's how this works. Control left click will move your mesh along the X axis. And it looks like we have snapping enabled. So we don't really want to have that on. Let me go and disable that snapping rotational snapping is probably okay but the the grid snapping we want to disable here so control left click will move your hair in the x axis control right clicking will move it in the y axis and control left and right mouse button together will move the height so you might find that a little easier to position i still don't really find it all that easy i got a be brutally honest. So sometimes, you know, if it's just like, I wish they had something like the shift control there. So we may have to just go in and hack numbers in. So I think minus 163 for the height is good. And then we need to have something along the lines for the, for the X axis, which is maybe in the region of 2.5. I think that'll be, that'll be just fine.
So that's the position of the hair. Obviously, spend as much time, as much or as little time as you like with this. Yeah, there's a little bit of poke through, so I think I'm going to go and move it down even further. And if it doesn't perfectly fit, you now know how to do this with Blender as well. There, let's leave it for now. So that's the socket in place. Let's go and save everything and then go and use some blueprint magic to attach this hair mesh to the socket that we've just put into the skeleton. The easiest way I know how to do this is to use the construction script. And there is a node that's called attach component to component. And it is friendly enough that it picks the hair mesh already in the target. And that is kind of correct because the parent needs to be the DAS mesh. So let's grab that out and pop that in here to parent. And then all we need to do is name the socket name, whatever we've called it in the skeleton. So we've called it hair socket. So it needs to match this exact name, hair socket. And then the moment we hit compile, it should go and pop right into place. And that's exactly what happened. So this is perfect. So the beauty of this is that I can now actually bring in several hair meshes or several hair colors and then just switch them out and code that way. So my character could have literally five different hair pieces and they would all work just fine. And this doesn't work on our skeletal mesh in the scene that's walking around because that is just the skeletal mesh without anything attached, but it will work for our blueprint character. Isn't that amazing? Very cool. So if you wanted to have something like this also walking around like her here, uh, stand alone walking around or doing some other animation, you can do that the easiest way by making a copy of your character, of your playable character, Let's save first, and then just hit control D to make a duplicate of that. And then call that maybe BP standalone. And this one I'm gonna open and just remove the camera from the viewport because we don't need it but you'll see that this character also wears the hair now so that's that's perfect so instead of my previous character where i just dragged in the skeletal mesh i can now go and bring in the standalone character here turn her around perhaps and if i wanted her to also have that animation that we had earlier then you can go over here and switch animation blueprint over to animation asset and then pick one of the retargeted animations that we've had there so in our case it was uh, walk forward there we go and then if we go and play then we have a walking character with hair attached and this character here, yeah, I couldn't delete it because sometimes Unreal Engine just, you know, makes this an unloaded character. That's one of those things. But there we go. That is how we do that now with attached hair. And the concept will also work for sunglasses. So go ahead and have fun and let me know how you get on.